Welcome to episode 10 of the Sporty's Advanced Pilot Skill Series. I'm Spencer Suderman, airshow pilot, flight instructor, and Guinness World Record holder for most inverted flat spins. In this episode, we're going to learn how to evaluate aircraft performance during an engine out emergency after takeoff, and whether this knowledge will influence your decision as pilot in command to land straight ahead or attempt to turn back to the runway. I'm going to address the impossible turn and whether it's really possible or just improbable. Now let's head out in a Cessna 172 over the beach in St. Augustine, Florida. One of the most important emergencies you can plan for and train for is an engine failure right after takeoff. Well, let's see what the checklist says. The checklist has many items on it, but number eight is the one we're gonna talk about right now. Number eight says land straight ahead. So if the checklist says land straight ahead, why do some pilots think they can turn back towards the runway and attempt to land on the runway they just took off from. Some pilots call this the impossible turn, but really it's the unlikely turn or the improbable turn. Because so many pilots have rationalized that they can actually turn back towards the airport and land on the runway they just took off from. That I don't even know why we call it the impossible turn anymore. While it's unlikely you'll make it, especially if you're low to the ground and close to the airport, and many pilots have proven over and over again that you can't make it. It's a misconstrued emergency procedure. What are the factors at play here that prevent so many pilots from achieving the impossible turn? You have to consider the aerodynamics of the airplane. When you've lost power and you've established best glide and you start turning and banking the airplane, the more you bank, the more the airplane's gonna sink. Without power, the airplane cannot hold altitude. And if you try to hold altitude, you're most definitely gonna have a stall situation, which you don't want in an engine out when you're trying to head back for the airport. The other thing to consider is how proficient are you as a pilot? And this is probably the most important concern. How proficient are you as a pilot to maneuver the airplane in such a way that you can make the impossible turn or the improbable turn back to the airport? How often do you go out and practice this? How well do you know yourself? How well do you know the airplane and its performance capabilities? I'm not here to tell you how to do the impossible turn. I'm going to show you how to evaluate your airplane's performance and your performance and capability as a pilot to even think about attempting it. And by the way, in an emergency, that's the last time you want to try something that you have never practiced before. In emergencies, we execute the maneuvers we've already practiced and have demonstrated proficiency in. So if a checklist says you should land straight ahead, why would you decide at the last moment that you can turn back towards the airport, especially if you haven't practiced it and don't know the parameters of the airplane and if it's even possible? So how do we evaluate it? When learning about the performance of your airplane, you have to know how much it sinks in a bank while gliding. So let's simulate an engine out. There's the engine coming out, and I'm gonna establish best glide at 65 knots. And we're gonna check the straight and level sink rate. So I've trimmed for 65 knots. Looks like my sink rate is 500 feet a minute. Now let's put a shallow bank turn in of 20 degrees. Now my sink rate is increasing. Remember I'm gliding, my sink rate is now 900 feet a minute. What if I go to 30 degrees of bank? At 30 degrees of bank, I'm still sinking about 900 feet a minute. Now what if I increase to 45 degrees of bank in a glide? Now my sink rate is approaching 1500 feet a minute. These are the things you have to know about the performance of the airplane and your performance as a pilot to evaluate if you lose the engine on takeoff or immediately after takeoff, should you attempt to turn back to the airport. You have to understand these performance parameters of the airplane and you as a pilot. And what altitude above the airport after departure would you be willing to attempt to turn back knowing how much the airplane sinks while you're executing turns of varying bank angles. Let's put the airplane in a simulated engine out at a thousand feet after takeoff and look at the descent performance. So I'm going to configure the airplane as if we're climbing out. We're starting at 2,500 feet. At 3,500 feet, I'm gonna pull the power simulating we lost the engine. So here we are, we've just taken off the runway. We're climbing out at 80 knots. I'm now 500 feet above my simulated runway at 2,500 feet. My vertical speed is plus 700 feet a minute. I'm on 80 knots, I'm at my climb speed. 
The wind is calm today. One of the most important factors is when you turn back towards the airport, which way are you going to turn? I would suggest when you practice this, practice turning into the wind. Today the wind is calm, it's not much of a factor. But if you turn downwind, you're already going to be blown away from the airport. Your chances of getting back to the runway are already nearly impossible. So there's 3,500 feet, I'm 1,000 feet above the runway, I've lost the engine. First thing I do is lower the nose, pitch for best glide, which is 65. And I'm going to immediately start a turn, do a 270 degree turn back towards the runway heading at best glide. Now do your maneuvering early. Do not do your maneuvering near the ground. And remember, this is now a 180 turn, but I'm offset from the runway because I made a 180. Now I'm coming up on my 270. I'm using a shallow amount of bank, about 20 degrees. Now I should up the runway right here. Now I'm going to turn 90 degrees towards the runway, keeping the bank shallow, because I know that if I bank steeply, I'm going to descend too quickly. I may be lined up with the runway, but at least I'm pointed at it, and I'm using the beach as the runway. Now I'm 500 feet down. I'm at 3,000 feet. I might be able to make the runway. Now I can go through the rest of my checklist. I think I have the runway lined up. I can run my checklist, attempt to make a landing, put in the flaps as necessary, slip if needed. You need to know how much altitude you lose in a turn with varying degrees of bank. So this is how to get the airplane turned around. Do your maneuvers early. Don't do them close to the ground because when you put bank in, you sink. You don't want to be sinking in a bank near the ground and grab a wingtip on the ground. Now I'm 200 feet above the ground, the simulated ground anyway. Coming up on ground level, I should be about landing now. So let's put the power back in. I'm back down to below ground level now. I'm at 2,400 feet. And don't forget to retrim because you trimmed for best fly. No one can really tell you if you should or should not attempt to turn back to the airport. It's a judgment you as the pilot have to make in the moment after becoming proficient at evaluating the situation in real time by knowing the airplane and knowing yourself as a pilot. That was quite a learning experience. Most pilots are unaware of how much altitude they will lose when turning without power. A real engine out emergency is not the time to learn this, which is why the majority who turn back to the airport don't make it. Here are the key learning points in managing an engine out emergency after takeoff. Immediately, lower the nose after engine failure to establish best glide. And if you determine that altitude is sufficient, then don't delay rolling into a shallow bank to turn around. The goal here is to not get farther from the airport. If you haven't practiced at safe altitudes to understand aircraft performance, speeds, and bank angles while gliding, and determine minimum altitude and distance from the runway to consider turning back, then you aren't prepared to consider it in a real emergency. An off-field landing site in front or to the side of you is likely the best option. Are you ready to continue your aviation journey and further expand your flight skills? Check out one of Sporty's exciting aviation courses, which include everything from private pilot training, how to fly tailwheel airplanes, and aerobatic training with Patty Wagstaff. Visit sporties.com forward slash discover for more information.